So now the Thai people are pissed off because they think I'm cheating. The Americans are pissed off because they think he's cheating. And a big riot started. Hey guys, in this part three of my video interview with Sensei Benny Urquita, a true legend in the martial arts, we're going to talk about like how his training was, how he basically trains, also the philosophy behind the martial art that he created called Yukito-kan. All that and more in this video. Anyway, if you like this kind of video, please support the effort. Hit the uh, like button, subscribe, share the video. Who was your most challenging opponent and why? You know what? Let me tell you something about that. Every one of my opponents were a challenge and I train whether I could knock them out in the first round or knock them out in the 15th round or the 12th round because back then I was fighting 15 rounds wow. and then the, you know, uh, then the state, athletic, the state athletic commission got involved and they brought it down to 12 because there were too many people who were getting concussions and so forth and some were dying from the, all the trauma, especially we're using our legs and mm -hmm. elbows and stuff. So they brought it down to 12. However, when I train, I train three times a day. I train six in the morning when the sun comes up is where all the energy, I'm doing all my running, my cardio okay, with my family and so forth. 12 o'clock when the sun is over my head is when I'm sparring, hitting and, and doing all my hard movement. Okay? And then six o'clock at night is when I meditate is when I put everything that I want to do, create and so forth. And I meditate at six o'clock at night. So it's six, you know, six in the morning, 12 in the afternoon, six at night. Those are the three most powerful times of the day. I train like that for everybody. And when they said, oh, this guy here is not going to be a step, you, you can, you're going to stop him real quick. I train the same way with everybody. I take nobody for granted. Mm -hmm. I train the same way. I train just as hard. Whether I knock him out in the first or I knock him out in the 12th, whether he's a hard hitter or a hard kicker, he's fast, it didn't matter to me. I train is hard for everybody. I never took anybody for granted. Nobody for granted. Why? Because all it takes is one punch to turn it around. That's all it takes. So I take nobody for granted. I train just as hard for everybody. Whether people say, oh, you're going to knock him out easily. I said, well, you're not in the ring. You're on the outside looking in. I said, if you're in the inside looking in, that's another story. I said, you're on the outside. So that's just what you're saying. But hey, when you're in the inside, tell me. Hey, you can see the difference because again, the emotional state of mind, I, there's, not, there's no emotional state of mind when I'm in that ring. I connect with my opponents because every thought has a frequency. Every word has a vibration. I connect to that with my opponent. Once I connect to that, to me, the fight's over with. Hmm. Okay? And it doesn't matter. It's just a matter of time. So I train, prepare mentally, physically, spiritually. I line myself up for everybody. I don't care who you are, how good you are. I train just as hard. I take nobody for granted. That, that makes sense. Let, let's expand just a little more on the training. So you, you said six in the morning, 12 uh, in the afternoon, then six at night, right? At night. How long are you training in the morning for like the cardio stuff? Anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours. Okay, so like hour and a half to two hours. Most people don't know how to run. I, I run different ways of using all parts of my body. They say, mm. whoa. What do you mean? There's only one way. You're running and that's it. I said, no, there's different type of running that I can run. Okay? And I'm running different techniques as I'm running. I'm doing sprinting or I'm doing hill climbing. I'm running hills or, I mean, because they're all different. So the breathing, what we call breath medicine, breath medicine is different for different running that you're doing. And so when I run, I run different ways all the time. When people say, oh, I'm, I'm, I get bored from running. I said, not with me, you won't. <laughs> people hate to run. I show them how to run. They say, and they say, well, maybe I can run a mile. They run five miles with me and they, they're shocked. 
Wow. I ran five miles. Are you serious? Why? Because there's different mental ways of learning how to run. Mm. Most people don't know how to run properly. They don't know how to run. They think they put on tennis shoes and they run. I said, that's not running. That's, that, that's not, you, you have to learn how to run, learn how to breathe, learn your body rhythm of what you're doing, whether you're going uphill, downhill, or flat. I said, there's different ways of running, and you got to know how to do that. So that's about an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. okay? So an hour and a half of running to two hours is different ways of what you're building. Now, most people breathe okay, uh, vertically. Mm -hmm. They breathe up and down. Most people breathe that way. But athletes that are good breathe vertically. I mean horizontally. Horizontally, yeah. Horizontally, they breathe this way. That means the ribs are opening up, taking more wind in their, in their lungs, in their chest. Okay? So you can always see athletes that know how to run and know how to breathe. You can see their body breathing. Hmm. Like an accordion. I said, ah, he, he knows what he's doing. And people breathe like this when they run. I said, have no idea how to run. They have no idea what they're doing. Wow. Hey, I don't judge it. I just recognize it because I'm a teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm not a trainer. I'm not a coach. I'm a teacher. teacher. And because I'm a teacher, I look at somebody, I turn them inside out, how they walk, how they breathe, how they move. If they're walking straight, if they're twisting their body when they walk, if they're leaning to one side when they, when they stop, all that is important. You know, it's all that uh, is movement in body talks or without you saying nothing it talks it tells you oh, sure. a lot about a person so that's you know that's in the morning and then in the afternoon is no thinking i like to put music why because it brings a rhythm out of me and i can go out there and i can hit hit the bag hit the speed bag i can spar even when i spar i spar with a rhythm put on some music and i can go pop 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 Pop, 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 pop. I'm making actually rhythm of technique coming out when I'm sparring. And people say, you look like you're dancing. I said, I am. <laughs> I am. There's a rhythm in my body with, with technique that when I put on, uh, when I, no matter what, whether I'm hitting bags or I'm hitting focus or whether I'm, I'm sparring, there's a rhythm in my body that comes out and I flow without thinking. In other words, I get out of my way, let my body just respond to rhythm. That's my own. That's natural. And so that's for about two hours. After I, spar, after I spar, then I, you know, I go to hit the focus, hit the power bags. I hit the power shields. I hit different bags. I have different bags for different rhythms. Mm -hmm. I have a, you know, I have a, a, what they call a kicking bag. I have an elbow knee bag. I have a bob and weave bag. I, you know, I have an uppercut bag. I have a timing bag. I have, you know, different bags, but see, people hit the, the bag, one bag the same way because they don't know what they're doing. Well, I shouldn't say they don't know what they're doing. They just haven't been taught. That's the word I'm looking for. They haven't been taught that every bag has purpose. Every, every bag been designed. I designed these bags, the, the six-foot bag mm -hmm. for different targets. The five-foot bag, but I almost needs to turn, like if I had you in a clinch, a hey, four, uh, four foot bag for bobbing and weaving, slipping, moving, using my head to turn my opponent and so forth. Hey, the, the, the peach bag is for uppercuts and so forth. The donut bag I use for knees, elbows, and over. So every bag has a purpose. Sure. Every bag of design has a different rhythm. It teaches your body different rhythm of different movement. It develops your body different. But most people don't know that. Or they're at a gym that's severely lacking in equipment, unlike yours. <laughs> Sometimes some gyms just have the big heavy bag. You do what you can on it. Uh, let's talk. Let's talk about the meditation. Are you also like visualizing yourself doing certain movements, or is that not part of the meditation? Meditation. I use the Kundalini meditation, which is the power meditation, in uh, you know, into the concentration meditation, into a power meditation, into the action meditation. Eh? The, uh, the concentration meditation is being able to bring your mind, body, and soul in one place. Because most people meditate, then other thoughts come in and it, it throws oh, them sure. up. So the concentration meditation brings your mind, body, and soul in one place. Eh? Once you get to that point, 
then you go into a power meditation with which you create you create what i call a workshop is where you and maker whoever you call your maker can only enter that workshop and in that workshop is all your gifts that you came in this world with and in that your body has better chemicals than any pharmacy in the world and i can put those chemicals together to give me the results i'm looking for whether it be endurance quick recovery whether it be healing whether it be it doesn't matter i can create anything and i do that in my workshop i heal in my workshop i create in my workshop i build in my workshop okay and so when i come out of my workshop i go into the action meditation to whatever i did in my in my workshop, I came out, now physically I'm going to do, because the chemicals in my body is giving me exactly that reaction where if I'm going for a run, if I'm gonna spar, if I'm gonna create, if I'm gonna do exercise, if I'm gonna stretch, I came out of my workshop with the chemicals to do exactly that. And I love teaching. I can teach anything. That's one thing I was gifted with as teaching. Since I was 14 years old, I always thought I was a better teacher than a fighter. Always. Well, you were one fight. of the best fighters by far. Like, nobody could say you're not. So the fact that, uh, I mean, that's amazing. You know, I wish I got to train with you someday. I wish I was still in California. But, um, there you go. wow. But anyways, uh, uh, my love is teaching. All the rest of it, you know, and creating. And uh, that's one thing I'm, I'm gifted with. I can. Fighting, I can. Uh, creating things, creating equipment, creating this and that, I can. Because that's what I, you know, when it comes to being creative, when it comes to perfecting somebody and making them believable, my job is to first hypnotize them to the point where they really know that they can actually do this for real. And so in that, that comes from teaching. So I create equipment, I create, you know, um, different, I design different things to protect the actors, protect the fighters. And that's one thing that I'm great at. I mean, I'm not good. I'm great. Let's yeah. talk more about that. Creating, uh, for example, you have your own martial arts system. Uh, you weak, you weak con? You keto con. You, you keto con. Yeah. I have trouble pronouncing some things. Can you explain how that came about, like the origin and everything? Yes. Well, first of all, I have a lot of black belts in different styles. And I know from being a fighter, a lot of the, because a lot of the teachers used to tell me that be careful with this move because you can kill somebody and hurt somebody. So when I first started doing full contact, I tried the move and I was great at it and I didn't make contact but he was still standing, looking at me like, you know, like he was scratching his, like, you know, like, I, and I said, well, my teacher said, if I did something like that, I would kill him, I would hurt him. Mm -hmm. And my intention was not to kill him, but, you know, my intention was to stop him. And a lot of this didn't work. A lot of the technique that they taught me in the arts, I did it for real, and it didn't do what they told me. So I thought, okay, then I need to modify what they told me and use it in combat, but in reality, for real. So I started modifying all that, all the technique that I've learned, I started modifying for the art of war. Mm -hmm. And so, and I realized my mother used to tell me, the art of war starts here. And my mother is professional wrestler. So she said, it starts here, 80% of the warfare is here. And my father was saying, yeah, 20% of it is physical. You know, he was a boxer. He says, physical is, but how good are you mentally? So then a lot of my senses were telling me, you know, uh, like Mr. Park was always uh, telling me about philosophy of warfare and this and that. And, and my first sensei was Bill Rosaki. And, but he was very physical, you know, and, um, and who was very, uh, very philo uh, philosophical was with uh, Mr. Parker, and he used to tell me a lot about different things and about warfare internally. And I can connect to him because of my mother he used to talk about warfare, Indian wild fighting back then. And and so my father was very physical, my uh, external. My mother was very internal. Hmm. 
So learning the art, I started modifying to work under pressure. So because I was already in, uh, uh, doing full contact karate, that means actually doing the art to the knockout. Mm -hmm. And I realized a lot of the technique did not work for real. So I started modifying it. By the time the word kickboxing was born in 75, 76, I realized I had to modify everything in the art that I knew about point fighting. I had to modify that to make it work for real in the street. So by the time I realized, okay, I need to create, because when I started, when these Muay Thai fighters started hitting me with low kicks and elbows and clinching, which I never saw before, I said to me, I said, you're taking it to the streets. I said, as far as I'm concerned, okay, let's take it to the streets. Because when they started kneeing me and elbowing me, all the Americans thought that they were cheating because they'd never seen that before. Sure. So I didn't know what to do, and, and my brother didn't know what to tell me. So I started lifting. I'm a good judo man. I started picking him up and throwing him on his head, and, <laughs> you know, uh, and all the Thai people never saw that. So now the Thai people are pissed off because they think I'm cheating. The Americans are pissed off because they think he's cheating, and a big riot started. And it started all the way around. So I realized from that point, I started to create Yukito Khan because I started putting a system together, but what I know to be true because I did it for real under pressure when somebody was trying to hurt me, I was able to realize certain things in the art, I modified them, make it work. So in 78, I came up with the word Yukito Khan means a way of life. Hmm. And a way of life is in the street because there is no rules. So I created technique from what I saw fighting the Muay Thais uh, from Japan, from Aurora, everybody they were doing Muay Thai. They, were, they all had different approaches of Muay Thai. I started taking what they had and modifying it. And I created a system called Yukito Khan, which I already created Yukito Khan Karate, which I already had. And then I started Yukito Khan kickboxing and I created a system which is a foundation to build and to take it around the world to show people what, you, what kickboxing was. So I created a system because if you don't give them a system to follow, then they make up their own stuff. So yeah. I created the system Yukito Khan to lead in their countries that they have something to follow, which was my book. My first book was about Yukito Khan, and it was about learning how to do kickboxing. And so I would leave that in their country, the book, the word, the technique, and I would do seminars on the technique and foundation of Yukito Khan Karate. So I created Yukito Khan Karate, mm -hmm. Yukito Khan Kickboxing, and Yukito Khan Boxing. Even my boxing is so unique than regular boxing. And every time I would box with Baba Chico and get him ready for his titles and so forth, my boxing was different because my feet work was different. And, he would, and my Baba, you always just say, quit with all that stuff with your feet. He says, box me. And I said, I am boxing you, but only, he said, yeah, but you got all this other stuff. He said, I, in boxing, he said, just jump back and forth and strike at me. I said, so I would, and I would get him frustrated because I would be using different work angles and so forth. And which boxers don't do. So, you know, and so I prepared him mentally because he, and then one time he hit me with the right cross. And I, I could have swore I, I start to see my ancestors, man, when he hit me with that right cross. And I, and autom automatically I came back and I kicked them. Just because, uh, you know. Oh, he, so in a boxing match, you kicked the guy. <laughs> I, I kicked him and he jumped back and he, and he told uh, Joe Pons, Take my gloves off. I don't want to swipe with no more. And I said, and I said, Bobby, 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 I'm sorry. You know what? I said, you know, hit me with the right cross, man, and, and you dazed me. I didn't even know I kicked you, but look it, it will never happen again. And he was pissed off at me. But we, we were friends. And I and I looked him in the eyes. I said, it would never happen, believe me. So we so we started sparring again and stuff. But I realized in the street. You're not gonna, I mean, I had good hands, but I, but you know, I got, I have more weapons. I have my legs, I have my knees, I have my elbows, mm -hmm. I have clinching, I have throwing, I have all these different 
the arts of war that I can use for real in reality. So when I did that book, I put it all together. So we're in reality, it truly is self-defense because it deals with the emotional state. It deals with a physical state and it deals with a spiritual state. So it's 20% physically, 80% mental, and 99.9% of the rest of that, which is internal, which is emotional. And the moment you enter your emotions into your 80% your focus, you just stop yourself because mm -hmm. you create it with emotions in your head. And anger, yes, a lot of people fight anger, but you can't see what's in front of you. All you see is an object and you're chasing it. Mm -hmm. Or if you're fear based, you're striking out of fear because every time you hit, it's like a cold shower. You get hit and you go, <gasps> your body, it's like a cold shower. And so you get stronger because of that. If you get frustrated, okay, that's when the emotions come in when getting frustrated because you're thinking to yourself, you're talking to yourself mentally. I'm better than this. Come on, I'm looking bad. Everybody's looking at me. So that's a mental state of what you're telling yourself. So when I created Yukito Khan, or the book of Yukito Khan, I created a way of life because at your work, you're dealing with that emotion, anger, fear, frustration, anxieties. With your peers, anger, fear, frustration, anxiety. With your family, anger, fear, frustration. All these emotions happen to no matter where you go, mm -hmm. whether it be your home, your work, with your peers, these emotions there, and they only come up when you feel threatened. When you feel threatened, they all come up. That's what, that's what your keto con is about. A way of life means how do you deal with that emotion when somebody's touching those buttons? Mm -hmm. What do you do with them? So it's important to understand first, mentally, when these emotions come, what do you do? And that's what most people have no idea. You know, somebody once asked me, he said, since you know what? I heard what you're saying. I know what you're saying, but you know what? What about, hey, what about a, a physical urge? And I said, you're talking about something different. Now he says, well, when you have urge, how, how do you deal with the urge? Okay, everybody knows how to deal with temptation. Mm -hmm. Hey, when you have temptation, hey, you run from it, you numb it, you do something hey, to relieve it. But when you have an urge, that's in you. What do you do with that? So that's internal. Still warfare. Because why? You're fighting against yourself mm -hmm. with that. What do you do? And I realized that when it comes down to it, you need to turn yourself inside out to look at your truth. And whatever it is, it is. Some people like what they see and some people hate what they see. It's the way you've been programmed. From the time you were born to your teachers, which is usually your parents, to all your other teachers. Understand? That's great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's great stuff. I love the philosophy and everything. And then obviously you have, as far as the physical aspects, these were, um, you know, tested in real battles. As far as you, Ketokon, though, outside of the book, outside of training with you or the seminars, do you have any students who have like, received black belt status who have gone out and have like Yukita Khan dojos or is that not really a thing? Yes, absolutely. It, I have, uh, I have uh, uh, about six champions underneath me and they open up, uh, you know, Nadine champion. Uh, she's, she holds three titles in Australia and she opened up a big dojo and she teaches Yukita Khan karate, Yukita Khan kickboxing. Oh, wow. That's great. So it, it, it can spread with uh, some of your students. Absolutely. I have students in uh, um, England. I have students, uh, you know, I have students all over. Like globally. Yeah, that's awesome. Exactly. And uh, the idea of it is because truly when I say it's a way of life, it's because it turns you inside out. It's how you've been taught. I'm going to give you an example. Your parents, your teachers, which is your parents, taught you from the time you were in the womb, eh, they were talking to you in your, uh, in your mother's womb, and you came out. Now you see this vibration where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So now they put you in a crib and every day they're putting their emotions into you for protection. Oh, don't touch that. Don't do this. And they put the things that they would want and they put there and you don't even, you don't even know anything about them and you don't even care. All you're doing is playing with the wilt, you know, the little foot there. <laughs> and so, but you're being programmed by their emotions, their fear, their frustration, their anxiety, and they're teaching you for protection. By the time you're three, you have forgot your brilliance and just been reprogrammed by your parents. By the time you're three, you're starting to understand their emotions, their vibration. By the time you're five, you are programmed by what they're saying. Don't touch that. You burn yourself. Don't go over there. You hurt yourself. Don't climb that. This don't, you know, and they're all there. They're fearful. They're giving it to you. So now by the time you're five, you have all your parents or whoever's raising you, their emotions in you for protection. Now you're testing it. Didn't I say not to touch that? Didn't I say not to go in there? Didn't I say not to climb that? And you're testing it because it's not yours. You're saying, why can't I touch that? Why can't I go in there? That makes so sense. Yeah. Everything they're telling you. By the time you're 10, okay, you're 12 years old now. Now your voices start to change. You got a couple of cubicle hairs and now I'm a man now. I don't want to be woke, told what to do. By the time you're 15, you are molded as a personality. Now, everything that your father your mother told you either you liked or you didn't like, and you'll say, I'll never do, I'll never do that to my friends, uh, you know, to anybody, uh, what my father did to me, I'll never do that. And you end up doing exactly what your father did to you mm. and so forth. Why? Because you program that. And then you realize through your journey, how you learned everything. It's a way of life. That is your keto con. That is your keto con way. That's great stuff. Very wise. <laughs> <laughs> very philosophical this is amazing one last thing one last thing because your your wife sarah told me that you're going to come out with some equipment pretty soon let's talk about this because i guess used to design like gloves and shin pads a certain way right that you could use in fights and some of your fighters you train can use let's talk about like that equipment a little bit and when you think it'll basically be out I created, uh, you know, I created shin guards back in 73. I created Velcro back in 73. I created the Velcro hand wraps back all back then. To me, everybody right now, I, they just copy each other and make it more fancy, more colors, more this and that. And I said, okay, that's old. Okay, that's, that's all old. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're in not creating. They're there to make money. So they're selling. But to me, I said, okay, I designed that way back then. Sure. Even the power bag, I have the first power bag in the power show I designed. Hey, way huh. back in 73, 74. I have all this equipment back then I designed. And I, I said, okay, now I got to the point where I see most people. I work with a lot of athletes. I work with a lot of actors and so forth. They can't afford, especially actor. I mean, uh, uh, lawyers and doctors, they can't afford to hurt their hands or mark their face, especially actors. Mm -hmm. So I design equipment to protect them in the gym because that's where most people get injured, in the gym. So I design equipment. I'm going to give you an example. My gloves comes in four pieces. My shin guards come in four pieces. My headgear comes in four pieces. My cup comes in four pieces. And you're thinking, hmm, oh man, what does that look like? What does that mean? <laughs> and the reason for that I design is because medically it prevents. If I want to hurt somebody, I don't care what equipment you have. If I want to hurt, I'm going to hurt you. Sure. But the equipment that I design will help you. It's preventive sports injuries that will help you uh, uh, getting injuries on your knees, your ankles, your shins, okay? uh, my gloves in four pieces that will protect your hands, your wrists, your forearms, okay? your elbow will protect, especially you know, that you want to protect. My headgear will protect. See, the headgear stops you from getting cut, doesn't stop you from getting concussion mm. because the concussion is from the number one to number seven vertebrae going every time you get hit your head goes with that hey this is where you get okay that's where you get uh with that or you get that kind of injuries so i designed a headgear that will help you 
Hey, we'll build your neck, we'll build your traps, we'll build your jaw, we'll build, it will help you movement because the, the headgear was not meant for you to take impact. It was just stopping you from getting cut. Mm -hmm. But I, I developed something different. So I have nine pieces of equipment. My jump rope comes in six pieces. <laughs> a jump rope? <laughs> it's just a rope and a handle. Yeah, yeah. Six feet. Well, my gear, hey, all my gear is so new. I have nine pieces of new equipment that will change the way people train, train uh, will train the way people develop themselves. Because so it's so different, like you, you probably have patents on this stuff, right? Of course. Of course. I didn't, I didn't back then because to me, it didn't, I didn't care about money. I cared about uh, protecting my students, protecting my, you know, uh, fighters out there. That's why I developed it back then. Now, I see so many getting injured and this and that, and nobody's doing nothing about it. So I said, okay, for the last seven years, I said, I'm going to do something about it. I, de I developed uh, nine pieces of equipment because I said I have a line of equipment, and I did three, and they said, that's not a line. So I developed all these other equipment to make it a line of equipment coming to your neighborhood soon. Soon. When you say soon, does that mean this year? I'll put it this way. Right now, as we're talking, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, manufacturers are looking at it to make the molding and so forth. So. so where can people find out more, though? Like, is there a website where they could kind of get a preview of it? or? I'll put it this way. I'll be very loud when I'm ready to come out. I'll be loud with it. Uh, everybody will know. Because right now, I just finished doing a video on their equipment to show how it works together and apart. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. You're wetting our appetite. We look forward to using that, right? And being safer in our training. <laughs> hey, this is the jet age. What can I say? <laughs> I mean, technique. 